Hi and welcome to this trigonometry video, part one of Solution of Triangles. For some this can be a tricky section of trig, so hopefully these two videos will help grow your confidence and provide you with a good structure from which to approach these questions. Solution of Triangles is the last of the six trig concepts that we have covered in our trig video series. Great work if you've managed to make your way through everything up until this point, well done. Again, like our approach to some of the other concepts, we encourage an active process here of what to look out for and what to use. Then there is some theory that we will go through, which is examinable and therefore required knowledge. And lastly, we will look at a worked example. So here is the list of options of what to use and what to look out for when doing solution of triangle proving questions. Start by always being aware of whether you're in a 90 degree triangle or not. This way you will know whether you can use your trig ratios or whether you will need to use your rules. We will run through these rules in a moment. Next is to identify or locate all the angles and sides on the sketch that are in the question. For this step you may need to use your geometry skills and knowledge. Then next is to identify a linking side. This is a side that connects the triangles that contain the information you require. Then there are two equations you will need to find. One is for the linking side and the other is for the side that appears in the subject of the question. The equation you find for this subject will most likely be in terms of the linking side. Your final step will then be to substitute the linking side into the equation of the subject and out should pop what you were required to prove. These proving questions frequently have a substitution question at the end where you have to calculate something. Make sure to practice these, read carefully what they are asking, substitute correctly, practice using your calculator and make sure to give your answer with units where required. So spending a bit of time on this slide, making sure you've written down everything, is probably a good idea at this point. Once we've gone through the theory, we will then run through an example and hopefully this, together with some further practice, will show you that this is quite a common recipe for the solution of triangle proving questions. Of course, the most important thing is to grow an understanding of what you are doing so that you are able to adapt the process when necessary. You can pause the video here for a moment if you still want to take some notes. Here are the three rules that are true in any triangle. The sine rule says that these ratios will all be equal to each other. And it is also true, therefore, to flip it and say A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. How you use this rule, therefore, depends on what you are looking for. Usually we place what we need on the top left of our equation. Then for the cos rule, we have stated one of the ways this is true from this triangle and the same for the area rule. The proofs of these rules, which can be found in our grade 11 and 12 study guides, are examinable and so we really encourage you to spend time on them so that you can be guaranteed of these marks. Let's take a moment here to focus on the construction for the proofs of these rules. What might be helpful to know is that the construction for each of the proofs is a perpendicular from a vertex. And to start correctly with this construction is key. So what this means is to make sure the vertex you construct from doesn't appear in what you are needing to prove. So for example, this construction, a perpendicular from A that I've drawn in here, will be correct for all of these versions of the rule, but not for the versions of the rules containing A that I have crossed out. Remember to spend time on the proofs of these rules, which you can find in our study guides, so that you know them with confidence. Now that we've got our list of options and have covered the theory, let's get into this 2D worked example. These questions are generally a lot more wordy than other types of trig questions, so take your time to read through it a couple of times before getting going with your answering process. We also recommend spending time analysing the figure, looking for what is where, which triangles are 90 degree triangles and which are not, identifying a potential linking side as well as looking to see where the subject in the question is. Like for example, here in this question, where does FP lie? Because it can feel like there is so much going on for these, we really recommend you focus on one thing at a time. For easy reference, we have popped in the list of options here of what to look for. 
Just a reminder here of the reduction rule for sine, that sine of 180 minus an angle equals sine of that angle. This reminder should help you find which angle you need to work with to get sine of alpha plus beta. Let's read the question through once together now and then you can take a moment to try it. So from two points A and B on a horizontal plane on either side of a vertical flagpole FP, the angles of elevation of the top of the pole are alpha and beta respectively. The distance APB is x meters. Show that the height of the flagpole can be given by FP equaling this in meters. You can pause the video now to give yourself the chance to read through the question as many times as you need and then give answering it a try. There are quite a few steps here, so we are definitely going to stick with focusing on one thing at a time. First, let's analyze the sketch. There are three triangles altogether, two right-angled triangles and one non-right-angled triangle. Alpha is here and beta is here. This side is x meters and FP, the subject of our equation, is this line here. So far we have identified where everything in our fraction is except the sine alpha plus beta. This also means we can't be entirely sure yet which is our linking side. Often there is some groundwork to be done before one can work through the so-called recipe. Here, for example, having observed that alpha plus beta doesn't exist as an angle anywhere in the sketch, we need to first identify which angle we need to work with to get sine of alpha plus beta as the outcome. So the groundwork here is using the sine reduction rule. If we look at our non-right angled triangle AFB, this angle here is 180 minus alpha plus beta, which means sine of angle AFB B is sine of 180 minus alpha plus beta. This then reduces to sine of alpha plus beta. And there it is. This also helps us decide on which side now to use as our linking side. In this example, you can in fact choose between FA and FB to be the linking side. We've decided to use FB as our linking side. Let's make an equation for it first. We use the sine rule in the non 90 degree triangle. So FB over sine alpha equals X over sine AFB. We can replace sine of AFB with sine of alpha plus beta because of having shown this working here. And so if we then make FB the subject, we get X times sine alpha over sine alpha plus beta. Next is to create an equation for the subject, in this case for FP, in terms of our linking side FB. FP and FB are part of this 90 degree triangle, so we can use trig ratios. FP over FB is sine of beta, and so FP is then equal to FB sine beta. And we have worked out an expression for FB already, which we can now substitute here. And bringing this all together gives us what we were asked to show. I would recommend, if there were any sticky points for you while doing this question, to definitely try it again. These questions can feel rather bitty until you find their flow. Once you feel confident with the example in this video, take a dive into our grade 11 and 12 study guides for further practice. Then just a reminder to study the proofs of the rules so that you can feel totally confident about getting these marks. These proofs are also great practice for getting used to working between triangles in an image. Thank you for watching this video. We recommend spending some time getting confident with these 2D examples before moving on to the 3D solution of triangles video and questions. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.